What's up guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to reassemble and align the inner gantry on a Monoprice Maker Ultimate. If you haven't watched my last video, I recommend checking it out first. There should be a pop-up in the top right and also a link in the description to it. It lays the groundwork for the alignment by squaring the outer gantry. Picking up where that video left off, let's go ahead and remove the alignment rig and all the 8mm rods. Here's a quick view of everything before we get started, just showing how everything on the gantry interconnects and has to go together at the same time. Alright, let's get to it. Disassemble the slides again by removing the screws and separating the two halves. Now reinstall the belts on each slide. All the belts are the same length, so it doesn't matter which one goes where. You should see a flat spot on each belt where it was previously mounted. Just place it back in that position and make sure the teeth are facing upward. Then reinstall the retainer with the two original screws. Do your best to line the belt with the 8mm round hole, but perfection isn't needed here because it can be adjusted later. Once all the four belts are reassembled onto the slides, set them into the case where they're eventually going to be installed. Pay close attention to orientation here. Make sure the notch on all four slides is facing toward the center of the printer. On the left and right ones, make sure the fasteners that hold the belt to the slides are facing downward and touching the frame. And when I say left and right side, I'm saying left and right as we're viewing it here. And on the back and front, the fasteners should face upward and be visible. Also, all four slides are the same, but the ones on the back and right both have extra pieces attached to them that activate the end stops. With the printer in this orientation, the longer one goes on the back and the shorter one goes on the right. If you put a slide in the wrong place, you can just swap this attachment around to where it needs to go. Now let's install the rods. Start with the back one, push it through the drilled hole and push it slightly into the case. Then add the first pulley with the teeth on the right side. Now loop the left belt around the rod Make sure the teeth on the belt are facing toward the rod and that the belt hasn't become twisted. Push the rod further into the case and install the back slide. The slide will rotate around because the belt is weighing it down. This is fine and will rotate it back later. Install the remaining two pulleys. These are in the same orientation as the first one with the teeth on the right side. Next, loop the right side belt around the rod and pulleys. Again, making sure that the teeth point inward and the belt isn't twisted. Now slide the farthest right pulley to the end of the rod and set the pulley onto the stepper motor belt. Then slide the rod the rest of the way into the case and into the bearing on the right. And finally, tighten both of the set screws that hold the rod in place just to keep it from sliding out during the next steps. Now let's install the front rod. Slide it in partially and install the pulley. Next, install the left side belt. To do this, start by setting the belt into the pulley on the back rod. Then stretch it tight and pull it toward the front rod. Then just loop the belt around the front pulley and set it into the groove. Slide both pulleys back and toward the frame, then continue pushing the rod into the case. Install the front slide. This slide will also rotate like the back one did, which isn't a problem. Install the final front pulley and repeat the process to install the right side belt. Loop it around the back pulley, stretch it tight and pull it toward the front rod. Then loop it into the groove on the front pulley. Once everything is positioned, slide the rod into the right bearing. You might have to fight with it a little bit because the belts are both getting pulled tight here. If it puts up too much of a fight, you can always remove the tensioners on the belt temporarily while you do this. I doubt you need to, but it is an option if you need it and finally tighten the set screws to secure the rod. Now the left rod. Push the rod slightly into the case, just enough to install the first pulley with the back stepper belt looped around it. I find it easiest to set the pulley onto the belt, then slide both onto the rod at the same time. You can always loosen the fasteners holding the stepper motor to the case if you need to remove the tension from the belt, but you probably won't have to do that. Now push the rod through some more and install the second pulley. Again, orientation matters on almost every one of these pulleys. Loop the back belt around the rod and continue pushing the rod through. Install the left slide. Push the rod through more and install the last pulley. 
loop the front belt around it and push the rod into the bearing. Finally, tighten the set screws. And now the right side rod. Push it through and install the first pulley. Set the back belt into the pulley on the left side. Pull the belt tight and loop it onto the pulley on the right side. Push the rod through and install the right slide. Push it through some more and install the last pulley. Set the front belt onto the pulley on the left side. Pull the belt tight and loop it onto the pulley on the right side. Push the rod into the case and tighten the set screws. All right, the outer gantry is assembled, but the slides should still move independently of each other. And now we're gonna work on the inner gantry. This next part may seem a little odd, but it is my preferred way to do it, and I'll show you why in a little bit. These are the other halves of the slides that we just installed. So what we're gonna do is remove one of the set screws from each of the halves. Make sure you're removing the same set screw from each one. Now install one rod on each of the slide halves into a hole that still has a set screw. Install the rod through the left side and push it through until it's flush with the right side. Then snug down the set screw. Then do the same for the remaining three. Now grab the main extruder block and slide the six millimeter rods into it, one from each direction. The horizontal ones should have the set screws facing upward and the vertical ones should have the set screws facing downward. Now set it into the case and let's install it. It doesn't matter where you start, but I'm beginning with the back ones. Line up the notch and groove and install the screws. Just install the screws loosely for now and we'll tighten them up later. Now move to the front and loosely install the screws there. Now the right side doing the same. And now the left side. And now we should fully tighten the set screws on the left and right sides to secure the horizontal rods. You should push down on the rods a little while you tighten these just to make sure they're sitting as far down as possible. And let me demonstrate what we just did here. The frame is rigid and the slightest rod deflection will cause the gantry to seize up, even if everything else is perfect. By securing this front six millimeter rod on the left and the back six millimeter rod on the right only, it allows the inner gantry to absorb some of the deflections. The rods are still fully secured on the left and right sides so they can't go anywhere, but the inner gantry is able to shift a bit when it's needed. Now let's square up the horizontal part of the inner gantry and secure everything in place. Start by installing the braces we used previously to square up the outer rods. Now we can tighten the set screws and lock the pulleys in place. Before you tighten them, make sure the pulley is positioned so that the belt is aligned with the rod above it. Here's an example of what you're looking for. Just shift the pulley over and try centering the belt with the rod. Once that's done, go ahead and start tightening the set screws. You probably won't be able to access all the set screws initially, so just start by tightening the ones that you can. Then remove the braces and shift the gantry back and forth to tighten the rest of them. Then after you're done, you can reinstall the braces and verify that nothing shifted while you were working. Only tighten the set screws on the back and front pulleys. We'll do the left and right ones in the next step. All right, now we can lock the vertical rods in place. Before we do this, we need to align and finish tightening the front and back slide halves. And we're gonna use the print head to align them. Start by picking a corner where you wanna start. I'm starting in the front right corner. Shift the block to the correct side, then get one of the fasteners close to tightening. Then move the block toward the slide and the Allen wrench. Then snug down on one of the fasteners. Then move the print head to the back of the printer and let's do the same thing on the back slide. Again, push the print head close to the Allen wrench and this time tighten both fasteners. Now move back to the front of the printer and loosen the fastener that you tightened previously. Then again, shift the print head back to the front and tighten both fasteners on the front slide. I do this extra loosening and retightening step because there's a lot of wiggle room on the initial tightening and this just helps get the alignment a little bit closer. Now verify that you're able to move the print head around without it locking up, especially in the corners. Then go around and make sure all the slide fasteners are snug down well. Just be careful not to go too overboard on the tightening because these aluminum slides will strip out. 
And now we're gonna lock the vertical rods in place because as you can see, it still shifts. Go ahead and install two of the braces again to temporarily square everything. Then tighten all the pulleys on the left and right eight millimeter rods. Basically we're repeating the same process we just did with the back ones. Make sure the belts are straight, then tighten the ones you can access, and then remove the braces and shift the print head back and forth to access the rest of them. Now go around the whole printer and check every pulley, and make sure the set screws are all tight. Snug up the ones that go to the smaller belts that connect directly to the stepper motors. And then check all eight case bearings and make sure that the set screws that secure the rods are all tight. Now flip the printer back over and rebuild the print head, starting with the bracket on top. Then set the stepper and feeder onto the block. Install the screws that hold the stepper and electronics to the front bracket. Begin installing the heatsink and the fan to the block. Install the extruder into the heatsink and block and tighten one of the set screws. Then snug down all the screws holding the heatsink to the block. Properly orient the extruder and tighten down both set screws. And finally, install the ribbon cable. If everything went right, you should have a working printer now. If you have any questions or thoughts about my process, let me know in the comments below. Hit the like and subscribe buttons if you found it helpful. There are donation links in the description if you want to help fund these videos. And you can also follow me at Locals if you want more frequent updates on my projects. That about covers it. Have a good one, guys.